Hi and welcome to the Cinnabar. It's just a beautiful early spring day here on the ranch in one of the most peaceful spots we have here. Um, this little Quaken Aspen Grove with some Ponderosa Pines here, a um, little creek trickling through. It's just really one of my favorite spots to be on the ranch. And it's already been a good morning because as I was coming up and setting up, sitting right here where I was setting up, beautiful five point shed antler here, mule deer antler. And, and just a minute ago as I was getting the camera ready, about 20 deer come down off the hill and out across here behind me. Um, wish I'd been filming and caught that as I was talking here. But anyway, we've, we've got a, a great little shoot plan for you here today. Um, we're talking lever action Winchesters in, in, in the classic era. So we're gonna go through from a 1866 all the way through an 1895, all, the, all the, the lever actions in between. And there's no reproductions here. These are the real deal. And we're gonna, we're gonna go through and talk about them a little bit, but most importantly, we're gonna, we're gonna have a little fun and, and maybe put a few shots through each of them. So stick around, we'll take you through, we'll talk a little bit about them and then we'll, we'll load them up and, and see how they do. So how about that lineup, folks? We start out with the bottom with the 1866 Winchester, the, the first to, to wear the Winchester name. Of course, we know there was Volcanics and Henrys that kind of preceded the, the 1866, but this is the first one that actually had Oliver Winchester's name on it. Now, we've tried to get uh, kind of a variety of configurations and calibers, so we've got eight rifles out here and uh, eight different calibers and different configurations. We've got a saddle ring carbine and a musket and uh, we we'll see we've got an extra length gun and a, and a short barrel gun and a saddle ring carbine and a double set trigger. So we've kind of run the gamut here. So I'll kind of take you through these real quickly and then we'll get down to business and uh, put a few rounds through them. So we talked a little bit about the 66. Um, it's the, uh, the toggle link type of um, action along with the 73 and the 76 the next two that are in line there that uh, 1873 is in 3840 and it's a 30 inch barrel um, really a, a nice original gun next one's a 1876 in 4560 it's just kind of a big brother to the 73 where they were trying to get a little more power they they call the uh, 73s a, a pistol caliber but uh, Really, they came out in the 73s as a rifle caliber first and then got adapted to the pistols. Um, 76s, we've got a little more powerful and it's a whole lot bigger um, action and, and uh, uh, really a kind of a nice gun to shoot. Then we get into the John Browning era where we're getting into the next one. It's a 1885. This particular one's a low wall and some people might say that's not really a lever action, but... Uh, well, it's my video and I like them, so we're going we're gonna to play around with that one today. That particular one is a case-hardened receiver and a 4440, which is a which is a real fun gun to shoot. Next one is an extra lightweight takedown 1886 um, in 4570. Next up, we've got a 1892 saddle ring carbine in 2520. And then a, a real nice 1894 pistol grip, double set trigger, half octagon in the venerable old 3030. And then the next one, we've got a NA, NRA musket in 30-06. Um, so that kind of kind of finishes out the configurations with uh, several rifles, a uh, saddle ring carbine, and a musket. So. Let's get down to business and we'll load these things up and get some targets out there and see how they perform. Okay, so let's get to shooting. We're gonna start off with the, the latest model first, which would be this 1895. This particular one is an NRA musket. It was uh, produced for NRA match competition back in the day. So we'd like to think this is probably a pretty good shooter. Let's give it a try. Shot right over that gourd. Oh, 
went right through it that time. Okay, let's try one of the gongs. Got it. Okay, well, with well, that's a shooter. Okay, so let's go with this 1894. This is a just a beauty. Pistol grip, set trigger, half octagon. Let's see why they're so popular. Knock that one down. We'll see if we can't get it off. Let's try that cow skull we found on the way up. That did it. Okay, how about another gourd? There we got it. That is a beauty. Okay, so let's try this 1892 2520 saddle ring carbine. Really a neat little plinking gun. Let's see, we got some more jugs to hit. Got it. Not quite as powerful as the other ones. Got it. Ah, oh, that old cow skull needs it. Yeah, it couldn't really see much, but it did bounce around a little. Let's try a gourd. Oh, over the top. <laughs> we got a pine cone. Okay, that's it for the 2520. Okay, now this is a beauty. This, this I love this gun. 1886, extra lightweight, only a 22 inch barrel. Lyman receiver sight, takedown. Just a really a nice gun. That did it. <laughs> Let's hit a gong. How about another one? And one more left. Let's hit that cow skull. Yeah, there we are. Well, I'm kind of getting low on targets, so I think it's about time we uh, stop and, and uh, redo some targets out there, make sure we've got a target-rich environment to shoot in. So stick around, we'll be right back and shoot these other four. Okay, four down and four to go. So we've got some more targets out there, and so we're going to go through these, these next four. We'll start off with the John Browning Masterpiece. The uh, low wall 1885 and, and 4440. We're just going to take a couple shots with it. Let's see. Let's see if we can't bust one of them gourds. Dead center, put a hole right in her. Okay, now we're gonna have some fun. 1876 Winchester 4560. We're shooting the holy black today, so uh, we're gonna make a little smoke with this one. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Uh, let's see what it'll do to a gourd. Yeah, it puts a little bigger hole in. How about a cow skull? Okay. <laughs> we'll let the smoke clear a little bit, and then we'll shoot this 73. Okay, so this is an extra length, 30 inch barrel, 1873. Let's see if that extra length gives us some more accuracy. Seems to work. Hey, I got a shell right here under my hat. <laughs> okay, let's try that other. Okay, now that, that is a nice shooting rifle. Okay, now here's something you won't see very often. We're going to see what, what this old 1866 will do. Or I guess we would, but I don't have any ammunition for it. They haven't made any ammo for these 1866s. It's 44 rimfire for decades now. Um, I'd sure love to shoot this rifle. 
I'm working on right now getting the tooling and, and uh, working down the shop on the lathe and maybe turning some brass for this thing. So that might make a pretty interesting video. If I can get it all figured out and how to make that rimfire cartridge, then we'll come up here and have some real fun and, and shoot one of these old 66s and see how she goes. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed the heck out of it. This, this is, was a great day. Um, we, maybe we'll come back and do a, a video of each of these uh, models at a later date, but today it was just great to kind of go through each and every one of them and, and uh, see how they perform and see how they shoot. This, this is a great lineup of rifles, and this was just so much fun for me. Um, so in the future, keep an eye out, and maybe we'll start uh, with this 66 if we can get some brass made for it, and uh, we'll have a little fun here in the future. If you're interested in Winchesters, and want to learn more, do yourself a huge favor and join the Winchester Arms Collectors Association. There are thousands of members in the association worldwide, and among them are some of the world's foremost experts, collectors, and authors when it comes to Winchesters. You'll also get a subscription to the quarterly Winchester Collector. Now this thing is just chock full of great information. Um, it's, it's worth the, the $50 membership fee all on its own. This, this is a great publication. I look forward to it um, every three months coming out. Um, you'll also get access electronically to every past issue. It's about 40 years worth. So there's just an incredible resource just in itself with the Winchester Collector. You also get an annual calendar that features some of the great Winchesters that belong to some of the members. You get full access to the forum and, and this Winchester forum on our website at uh, winchestercollector.org is just fantastic and a lot of the experts that I was talking about earlier are on there regularly uh, sharing information and answering questions. It's just a, a great, great forum to, to be a part of. If you're also a member of the Cody Firearms Museum, you get 15 uh, factory record searches. The factory records are housed there at Cody. Um, so if you belong to the, the museum and the uh, Winchester Arms Collectors Association, you'll get those 15 searches, and those are extremely valuable for uh, checking the configuration of, of one of the Winchesters left the factory. You get uh, merchandise discounts, and you also get free admission to our annual Cody show back in, in uh, Cody, Wyoming. Great show to go to, and then zip on over and, and check out the museum as well. So be sure and join up with the Winchester Arms Collectors Association. Uh, you'll never regret that you did. It's a, just a fabulous organization and you, you'll learn a tremendous amount and have tremendous resources there. So, until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.